bless this service and bless it richly. In Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing if you can. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, some of you are awake. How many have come to worship this morning? Amen. Amen. Emily came up to me this morning and was asking me questions about the website and wanted some different things. And she said, well, what's your vision statement? I said, I'll get back to you on that because I had to think about a proper vision statement. But I think that our, as a team, I think our vision is, first of all, to honor God, but second, to encourage and to worship, but to lead you in worship and lead by example. But we do that, but we also want you to worship with us. Because we can, we, we can stand up here and some of us sound really good. Some of them are like me and don't, you know, can't sound too well. But we do okay and we worship and we sing. But you know what? If our minds aren't in it and we're not doing it for the right reason and we minds are not on God, I don't care how good you sing. I don't care how pretty you look. But we've got to enter into worship. And worship is just not standing up here singing. It's giving of yourself everything in you to God. And that's what I want you to do this morning. Why? Because we serve a holy God this morning. Amen? Do you believe that? Amen. You are holy. You are holy. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are worthy. You are worthy. Worthy of praise. Oh, I will follow.
for you. I take myself. Can you ladies just do that one more time? I want you to hear who our God is this morning. My Lord, I love that part. Because it says, let me just read it to you if you haven't caught on yet. You are Lord of Lords. You are King of Kings. You are the mighty God, the Lord of everything. You're Emmanuel, which means God with us. You're the great I Am. You're the Prince of Peace. You are the Lamb, the living God, my saving grace. You reign forever. You're Ancient of Days, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, Savior, Messiah, Redeemer, my friend. That's enough right there, though, to make you want to shout this morning. He's the Prince of Peace. I don't care what kind of chaos this world's in. The world's just peace and safety. But sudden destruction's coming. But I'm telling you this morning, I've got God on my side. It doesn't matter what comes or goes. It doesn't matter if people quit. It doesn't matter if people forsake me. God's on my side. And there is peace in my soul. No matter if turmoil's all around me. Why? Because I know I'm safe in Him this morning. Amen. Come on, ladies. Do that one more time. You know, sometimes it feels like he changes and he's not those things. Can I tell you, our God's unchanging. Scripture says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Old Testament says it like this. Our God does not change. He does not change. That word in theology is called immutable. It means he's everlasting to everlasting, unchangeable. And I love this song because it doesn't matter what you're going through and sometimes you feel like God's a million miles away. You been there? He's still faithful. Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. All Israel was falling apart. They were going into bondage. But he had a promise, 70 years. That's all. And he said, in Lamentations, he said, I remember the wormhole and the gall and the bitterness and all the bad stuff. And sometimes that's all we think about. We think about the bad stuff. But he said, I recall to my mind, I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies I'm not consumed. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, they're renewed. So I don't care what you face this week. I don't care even what you face this morning getting out of bed. Can I tell you, God is going to be faithful to you because He can do no other. If you're faithful to Him, He'll prove Himself to you this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel Him this morning. Go ahead, guys. Kick it off. So we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. Come on, you know it. Yeah, we raise up holy hands. Come on. To praise the Holy One. Oh, bless His name. Who was and is and is to come. Kick it off, guys. Put your hands together. Aren't you glad He's faithful? Well, great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. You never change, oh, you never fail, oh, God. Well, true are your promises. True are your promises. Oh, I'm glad. True are your promises. You never change. You never change. You never change. 
In that moment, when you feel the conviction of the Lord, you begin to get a picture of who you are. And you begin to see that you are a miserable wretch, and you feel unlovable. But can I tell you, in the midst of your mire, in the midst of when you think you're unlovable, the God of all glory saw you long before. And He doesn't just see where you're at or who you are. He sees your future. He knows where you're headed. He knew James Turner when he was in a bar drinking and doing all the things he did. He knew a few years later he'd be in a pulpit. He'd be in a jail. See the soul after soul after soul run to the kingdom of God. So don't think when you feel miserable and when you feel like you can give up and you feel like God can't love it. Our God's love is wide and it's unchanging this morning. Wide is his love. Come on. Why is your love so great? Why is your love so great? Why is your love so great? Oh, you never change. You never fail, oh God. I said, why? Why is your love so great? Why is your love so great? Why is your love so great? Yes, he is. You never Oh, come on, let's worship him together. Let's raise our hands and give him the praise. So we raise up holy hands to praise the holy heart who are the Lord of and is to come.
Not just a spirit that people think of a mist. He's a person. The third person of the Trinity. The third person of the Godhead. And when we welcome the Holy Spirit, He is God's Spirit upon this earth. He's what we feel in our heart. He's who makes us feel Christ. He's what takes our petitions to Christ and Christ takes our petitions to the Father. He is God's revelation on earth today that we feel in our souls. And he's most certainly welcome in this place. Amen. Mm. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Really easy. Come on. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in. Omnipotent. Come on. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome. Thou art welcome here. Oh, come on. Can you lift that up to him? Lift your hands and tell him. Oh, Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this worship you, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in Oh, push in the omnipotent Father, come on. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, thou art welcome Can you do it just one more time? Holy Spirit, you're welcome here this morning. Oh, I welcome you, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome me. Come on, let me hear your voices ring. It's really easy. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome me. Oh, hallelujah. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome See if you remember this Holy Ghost song. And sweet Holy Spirit. Come on. Sweet Heavenly Dove. Stay right here with us. Oh, you're feeling us. Filling us with your love and for these blessings come on and for these blessings we lift our hearts in praise without a doubt we'll know that we have been revived when we shout oh come on now sweet holy spirit oh Wow. 
without a doubt will know that we have been refined when we shall leave without a doubt come on without a doubt we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place oh bless his name come on you've got a hand out of praise come on act like you mean it this morning come on he's worthy you're talking about the king of kings you're talking about the lord of lords you're talking about the god who saved your soul you're talking about the god who brought you up the god who set your feet upon a solid rock and gave you a strong foundation this morning you're talking about the lord of lords and the king of kings can I do something one more time and then we'll sit down? Go back to the first song. I want to do it one more time. You are holy. I don't know why. I just feel like doing it one more time. I'm music. I'm praising the worship director. I can do what I want to when he tells me to sit down. So he ain't told me to sit down yet, and I'm not looking at him if he is. So <laughs> I'm teasing. Come on, let's do you are holy one more time. I want you to, when we get to the second verse or chorus, I want you ladies just to sing it out. Come on. I feel God this morning. Well, you are holy. You are holy. Well, you are mighty. You are mighty. Well, come on. You are worthy. You are worthy. You're worthy of praise. Worthy of praise. Well, I will follow. I will follow. Oh, I will listen. I will listen. Oh, I'm going to love you. Tell me about God. Oh, my God. Tell me about the Lord.
We care to You sound amazing. <laughs> Thank you. of all the earth would care to know my name would care to feel my hurt who am I that the bright and morning star would choose to light the way for my ever wandering heart not because of who I am but because of what you've done Not because of what I've done But because of who you are I am a flower quickly fading Here today and gone tomorrow A wave tossed in the ocean A vapor in the wind Still you hear me when I'm calling Lord, you catch me when I'm falling You've told me who I am I am yours I am yours Who am I That the eyes that see my sin would look on me with love and watch me rise again who am i that the voice that calms the sea will call out through the rain and calm a storm in me not because of who i am but because of what you've done not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind. Still you hear me when I'm calling, Lord you catch me when I'm falling. Told me who I am. I am yours. Not because of who I am. But because of what you've done Not because of what I've done But because of who you are I am a flower quickly fading Here today and gone tomorrow A wave tossed in the ocean A vapor in the wind Still you hear me when I'm me. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling. You told me who I am. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours.
want to say something before I sign this song. I heard this song yesterday morning and I've never heard it before, but it really touched my heart because there are times and I'm going through a struggle right now and it's always a struggle in my mind between what I say I am, what God says I am, who others might say that I am and God's telling me I am again. And you know, sometimes I think back to the things I've done and it affects me, but you have to keep taking it to God and asking for forgiveness because he gives you mercy new every day and let him wipe you clean. And if there's anyone who's not saved this morning, I hope that you would listen to the lyrics of this song. And, and just to let you know, you don't have to have an altar call to come to the altar and ask for forgiveness. You can come at any time. Um, I just, just worship with you.
take up an offering right now. And I don't have any scripture or fancy things to say except just give from your heart. Give what God impresses upon you. Give it back to God. And I would like to ask Norman if he would pray for the offering. Go ahead and dismiss Jones Church. Mom, come on up. You know, the only way that you can truly be washed clean is to have the blood of the Lamb applied to your life to cover your sins. And that's what this song says, that when he sees me, he sees the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Looking down through the ages, God beheld our dying souls. Sin had brought separation, never more could man be whole. There must come a lamb, one whose blood the Lord redeems, bringing gifts to the Father of our souls made white and clean. And when he sees me, he sees the blood of the lamb. He sees me as worthy and not as I am. He views me in garments as white as the snow. For the Lamb of God is worthy and He washed me this I know. So he left that holy city, traveled on to an old rugged cross, thus to bridge the gulf to glory and to rescue all the lost. By his blood he entered into the throne room of our God. Salvation for us all. And when he sees me, he sees the blood of the Lamb. He sees me as worthy and not as I am. He gives me garments. As white as the snow, for the Lamb of God is worthy, and He washed me this I know. Come down with the music. So you're going a little, we need to change the tempo, it's a little slower. Looking down through the ages, God beheld our dying souls. Sin had brought separation, never more could man be whole. There must come a lamb. One whose blood alone redeems, bringing gifts to the Father of our souls made 
white and clean and when he sees me he sees the blood of the lamb he sees me as worthy and not as I am he views me in garments as white as the snow for the Lamb of God is worthy and he washed me this I know and when he sees me he sees the blood of the Lamb he sees me as worthy and not as I am. He views me in garments as white as the snow. For the Lamb of God is worthy. And he washed me this, I know. The Lamb of God is worthy. And he washed me this, this I know. Yes, Jesus loves. loves me yes Jesus loves me the Bible tells me so Praise the good Lord, good spirit here this morning. Amen. It's good to see my friend Donald here today. Donald and Tina and two of their beautiful daughters. I didn't say which two. Amen. When you look at Donald and Tina, you can't see how in the world Julie came from that. I just, uh, it's interesting. If you have your Bibles, please, let's go to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16. You Bible scholars should immediately know what this story is about, right? First Samuel, Samuel, I can't talk. Samuel. Yeah. It's the Wayne version of the Bible. So. First Samuel, chapter 16, verse 10 through 13. This is one of those stories in Scripture that every preacher looks for a new way to preach it. But you can't. Same stuff, right? That is so bright, isn't it? Thank you, Lord, for new stuff. Amen. Verse 10 says, In the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked, Are these all the sons you have? There are still the youngest, Jesse replied, But he's out in the fields watching the sheep and goats. Send for him at once, Samuel said. We will not sit down to eat until he arrives. So Jesse sent for him. He was dark and handsome, kind of like myself, with beautiful <laughs> eyes. <laughs> and the Lord said, this is the one, anoint him. So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil. And the spirit of the Lord came weak way, weak, no, powerfully, upon David from that day on, then Samuel returned to Ramah. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning, God, thanking you for all of your blessings, 
Thanking you, God, for the wonderful spirit that we feel in this place here this morning, great God. Father, I pray that you would just give me an anointing, God. Bless me right now, God. Strengthen me right now, Lord, God, and move upon these folk that are in this room. And God, let your spirit have its way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Give God a big hand clap, please. <laughs> Thursday night, we talked about Legos. Does anybody remember that? Amen. Does anybody know that the word Legos is actually in Scripture? If you don't, ask somebody that was here Thursday and they'll show you where it's at. Amen. Things you can build on. We talked a little bit about it this morning in Sunday school class. There are things that happen in your life. There are things that God does for you, does through you that things can be built upon. Amen. A little bit in this Sunday school class this morning, Matthew 6 and 22, I believe it was, we were talking about our eyesight. And how many of you know in scriptures when the Bible talks about one thing, there's probably another meaning to what's actually being said. When the Bible in Matthew 6 and 22 talks about our eyesight, I don't think they're speaking about the two eyeballs in our skull. Although they might. But I believe the scripture in Jesus goes a little bit further and he's talking about spiritual eyesight. He's talking about something a little bit more that goes on in an individual. And when you take that and relate it to this morning, I believe when you read about David and that great big giant, I believe there's more there than just a cool story that we teach children. There's more there than just some saying that's been said for years knock down your giant destroy your giant beat up your giant take control of your life stand on the lord that's all great stuff but i believe there is more that we can learn from this story you see i believe that there was a david before the giant and there was a david after giant how many of you know the giant defines us how many of you know the battle defines us? The struggle defines us. Our weaknesses define us. Our strength defines us. You see, before this event that we read about here this morning, there was a David before the giant. David was the good-looking kid, the baby of the family, who did what his dad told him to do. He was loyal to his dad. He was faithful to his dad. He did his job. He did his job faithfully. When his family was in eating, trying to impress the figure that had come into town, David was still out doing his job. That says something about David. It says that even though the family was in there enjoying a time of refreshment, a time of relaxation, David knew that there was a job that still needed to be done. And because that job still needed to be done, he did that. And the reason he did that is because he was faithful to his dad. He was faithful to the chores that his dad had put upon him. And he knew that if somebody didn't stay out in the field and watch over the sheep, then something bad was going to happen to the sheep. Now, how did David know that something bad was going to happen to the sheep if they had not been tended to? I believe David learned that one time he looked the wrong way or he looked another way or he fell asleep or he did something, and maybe something bad happened to the sheep. So he learned that I need to keep my eyes open. He learned that I need to pay attention. He learned that I need to... Stay focused on the job that the Lord has given me, that my dad has given me. I, I need to stay focused on that. I don't want my dad to lose anything. I want all of our sheep to stay intact, so I'm going to be very good at my job. And if you read the scripture properly, you will find that David was very good at his job. Amen. He had mastered something that most people had not mastered. He learned how to use a slingshot. And how many of you know the slingshot we're talking about here? It's not the one we played with as a kid. This was a different kind of a slingshot. You had to have some serious accuracy, some serious timing down in order to do the job the way David did the job. David became an expert 
at his job. How many of you know that? He became an expert at taking care of the sheep. Somebody say amen. There is nothing wrong with you becoming an expert at the job that God has given you. There is nothing wrong with you being loyal to the calling that God has put. There is nothing wrong with that whatsoever. David became a master at it. And because David became a master at his job, and because he had built a relationship with his earthly dad, and not only his earthly dad, but his heavenly dad, David became an expert at other things as well. I mean, believe David became just a little bit cocky in his skills. I think he did. Is there anything wrong with becoming a little bit proud of what you know? I think not, as long as it you know, doesn't become a hindrance to you. I believe David became very, very good at it. He, be, he was very confident in his skills. That's why when you read the scriptures and you know all the things that David knew, when the giant finally did show up, David didn't question if the giant could be defeated. While the others were questioning if the giant could be defeated, David wasn't questioning if the giant could be defeated. David was saying, what do I get when I defeat the giant? You see, most of us look at the giants that we deal with today, and we wonder if it can be defeated. And can I tell you something? If you wonder if it can defeat it, be defeated, I'm wondering if you have become a master at your craft. If you become a master at knowing who Jesus is, you don't look at any problem and say, if. You just say, when I knock it down, what do I get? When I defeated, what is the prize that I get when I defeat this? Now, saints, we've been talking a little bit in our Sunday school class about the mind and our eyesight and the things that build us up the way we are, the things we were taught as a child the things that happen to us as a child, the things that mold us and make us what we are. And sometimes the things that mold us and make us what we are, they're wrong, they're messed up, they're skewed. And because of that, our eyesight, our vision into the things that we deal with is oftentimes messed up. God allows certain things to come our way not to be mean to us, not to hurt us, but to show us what we are capable of doing. Somebody say amen. amen. God allows some trials to come our way to make us stronger. Amen. amen. God allows us to go through tough times in our lives to take us to a different place. Amen. God allows issues to happen in our lives to push us beyond where we are currently. Amen. You see, it all depends on how you look at things. If your eye is still... Looking at negative things, you're going to look at things as negative. Somebody say amen. If your eye is good according to scripture, your whole body is going to be filled with the light. Why? Because you're looking at things the way God wants you to look at things. And when David looked at the giant, he looked at the giant as the lion that he had already defeated. He had looked at the giant, Norman, as the, the bear he had already defeated. He looked at it as just a simple obstacle. To getting to what he wants. Somebody say amen. amen. So that's why when David stood up and said, what do I get? How many of you know when you stand up and say, what do I get when I defeat this giant? The people around you think that you're, there's something wrong with you. Because the people around you, all they see is a big nine foot plus giant saying, are you serious? You're five foot nothing and you're going to knock down a nine foot giant? Absolutely I'm going to knock down a nine foot giant. David, how can you be so sure? God delivered the lion into my hands and God delivered the bear into my hands. God will also deliver that uncircumcised Philistine into my hands. You see, David again had mastered his craft. He knew what he was doing. He knew that God would take care of him. He knew that God would stand beside him. He knew that God would allow him to defeat whatever came his way. Saints, listen to me this morning. You and I need to master our craft in the Lord. We need to have faith in God knowing that no matter what comes our way, if you have the faith that you need, if you know God the way you're supposed to know God, you know that he will deliver that enemy into your hands. Amen. You will defeat that enemy, period. Most of us don't want to think that way. We want to sit back and look at the giant or the enemy and think he's going to defeat me. God, why another trial? You know when the trials are going to stop? 
when you're dead. Amen. So if you're dealing with trials, take a deep breath and say, thank you, God, I'm alive. Somebody say amen. God, thank you for the test because I'm being tested with something. Norma, we've been saved for a long time. We should have learned something by now. And sometimes we have to be tested, Bernardo, to see if we really know what we say we know. Do you really know what you say you know? We're going to find out. Because I would venture a guess, and I'm not a prophet, guys. There's going to be a giant come your way again. And how many of you know that God will continue to bring a giant your way until you beat it up? Not only beat it up, but cut its head off. Render it ineffective in your life. Somebody say amen. How many of you know that there are people in here today that we need to render our giants ineffective? We need to destroy them once and for all. Amen. We need to cut their heads off once and for all. Amen. Stop living in the same battle over and over and over again. Finally defeat it. You see David before, now let's look at David after. David defeated that giant, didn't he? He sure did. He not only knocked him down, he knocked him down while not using the proven armor of the army. There's something to be learned there, saints. Sometimes the giants that we face, they're not going to be defeated by the proven techniques of the world. Somebody say amen. Here comes the spiritual side to things. Sometimes, Norman, the giants that we face, here comes the spiritual side. We have to defeat them through prayer, and we have to defeat them through fasting, and we have to defeat them through the Word of God. We have to actually pick up a sword from time to time, and I'm not talking about a metal blade, amen. I'm talking about the sword that the Scripture talks about. Use it and use it properly. So he did knock this giant down. He did defeat this giant. He did destroy this giant. And because of what he did, guess what? He became known as something other than the little boy that tends the stinky sheep out in the field. 1 Samuel 16, 18 calls him a mighty man of war. What? What? The boy before was the one they didn't even think about when it came time for dinner. The boy before was the one, Norman, that everybody expected him to be out there cleaning up after the sheep, taking care of the sheep, sleeping with. They expected him to stink. Did you know that? They expected him to be dirty. They expected him to be something less than them. But isn't it funny? Now we see after this he's known as a mighty man of war. 1 Samuel 18 and 7 says, And the women answered one another, and they played and said, Saul has slayed his thousands, but David his ten thousands. That insulted Saul. Did you know that? That upset Saul, this little bitty boy that wouldn't accept his armor to defeat the giant, the cowardly king that wouldn't face the giant, this little bitty boy who did it with a slingshot and a couple pebbles. Now he's known as a mighty man of war. Isn't that amazing? We in our families, we want to be known as something. Amen. We want our friends to know us as something. We want them to respect us. We want them to look up to us. We want them to admire us. We Pentecostal peoples, we want to be known as the super spiritual kind. We want to be known as the tongue talkers and the shouters and the pew walkers and the runner. We want to be known as that. There's nothing wrong with that. But guess what? you got to back it up with something. There's more to fighting this spiritual warfare than shouting and walking pew tops. How many of you know most battles are lost when you're by yourself? But when you win a battle, when you're by yourself, Norman, man, the rumors get out. Somebody say amen. Saints, listen to me this morning. You and I need to decide, are we just this wimpy little thing that claims to know who God is, or are we truly a mighty man or a woman of war? Amen. Pastor, are you saying we need to go around and be aggressive and be mean? No, I'm not saying that. 
But when the enemy rears his ugly head, do you run? Do you cry? Do you cow tail? Or do you stand up and say, what? What do I get when I defeat you, enemy? What do I get when I conquer you, trial? What do I get when I overcome this addiction? What do I get? Wasn't anything wrong with David asking that question? What do you get if you defeat that giant that you're dealing with right now? Can I tell you what you get? If you read this, they were all in fear of Goliath. And those people, they were afraid of him. Anybody ever lived in fear before? Amen. You ever been afraid of anything? You should watch my boys when a mice or when a mouse runs across our floor. Watch them jump up. Amen. Pull the, That's fear. Amen. A little bitty mouse. And when they see that, man, oh, everything stops. I don't care if you're watching your favorite show or not. Dude. I don't do that. I get up and go chasing after the mouse. I'm not. There's something about that little bitty varmint. Hey, Amen. I hate them things. I, I, they're afraid of you more than you are of them. His feet come up, man, and you're, uh-uh. I want to go find the shotgun and shoot it. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. Then I know big holes in the wall. That, that's too expensive, so we'll do it the right way. But he was known as... A mighty man of war, or 1 Samuel 17, 37 says, David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion, I already said this, and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver this uncircumcised Philistine into my hands. Do you believe that this morning? Has God ever gotten you through anything at all? Has God ever taken care of you at all? Has God ever blessed you at all? Somebody help me this morning. So if God has done all those things up to this point, do you really think he's going to let you fall prey to the next giant that you face? I don't think so. Pastor Wayne, how, how can you say that? Me and God, and I like to say me and God because it makes me kind of feel like I had something to do with it from time to time. Me and God, we have gone through a lot of stuff together. Somebody say Amen. We've dealt with a lot of stuff together. And as we said in Sunday school class this morning, this 44-year-old, he's learned a couple things over the last few years. Somebody say amen. I've learned, Norman, that when there's a giant way bigger than me and I'm afraid, that's okay. Because all i got to do is step back and say, Papa, take care of that. Somebody say amen. Brother, come in here and take care of that for me. And according to what I read in scriptures, he's perfectly fine with that. Somebody say amen. He's perfectly fine with standing up for me and, you know, fighting my battles for me. Amen. Because believe it or not, after all these years, there are times when I become afraid as well. Somebody say amen. But here's the thing. I have learned that I don't run from the battle when I'm afraid. I have told many people this. Don't let your fear cripple you, but let your fear drive you and pastor Wayne what do you mean when you say that when something comes your way get let the fear do something positive in you don't let the fear make you run don't make the fear make you turn and run the other way you let that fear get in you and do what it was supposed to do allow it to bring something in you that says I'm going to take this thing down once and for all amen you don't run Thought came to me this morning, and you've heard me say it numerous times, the enemy is a bully. That's all he is. Stand up to a bully, saints of God. Don't let a bully bully you. Let him push you around. Stand up to them and tell them what it is. How many of you know that we're being bullied sometimes by things that we can't even see anymore? Sometimes we're bullied by thoughts. Sometimes we're bullied by fears. Sometimes we're bullied by the past. Can't do anything about that. You can't change that. The only thing you can change is now and in the future. You can make the decision, no. I believe David learned what it was like, like I said, to turn and look the other way. Things happen, Norman. You don't turn and look the other way. You stand and fight. Pastor, you're violent this morning. Possibly. You see, I learned what physical violence is. And then I learned, Donna, what spiritual violence is. And if I read my Bible correctly, 
Brother Tom, there's constantly a war going on in the spiritual realm, even right now. Amen. And you've heard me say this. I wish sometimes that the Lord would open up our eyes and let us see the spiritual realm. You know, I asked the Lord that one time, Lord, let me see into the spiritual realm. You know what he said? Pay attention. Did the Lord really say it? Yes, he said pay attention. Because you know what I'm going to tell you right now? Pastor Wayne, you're, you're going to be dope. Here's what I'm seeing right now in this room. There's a war going on. Not just one. Multiply it by 100 people that's sitting in this room right now. There is a war going on right now. Pastor, how can you say, I know it because I, I'm one of you, remember? There is a war going on right now for each and every one of you. Are you hearing what the Spirit is telling you right now? Or is the, 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 the Spirit of the enemy stealing it away from you right now? Is God dealing with you right now on a level that he's been trying to deal with you for years, but you're pushing against it, you're fighting against it? Why? Because of thoughts, because of fears, because of whatever? That's spiritual warfare. And when I talk about violence spiritually, saints of God, there has to be something rise up in you spiritually that says, I'm not listening to you anymore. I'm going to defeat you now. I'm going to destroy you once and for all. You're never going to rise up against me again. I don't care what you do. You're never going to rise up against me again. You know what you find about David after he was named a, a man of war? Not only a man of war, but a mighty man of war. He became the psalmist, David. Isn't that interesting? Whoa. You've heard me say it numerous times. I think David was a little bipolar. Because if you read Psalms, one minute he's crying like a baby girl. And the next minute, God's awesome. You know who that sounds like? Me. I would point my finger at you, but... He sounds like me. Because there is one moment, Ed, when I'm going, God, come on, man. Please, God. God, don't you see this? I'm weary. I'm tired. God, I don't want to fight this now. And then the next chapter of my life, I'm like, whoo. God's awesome. You know what I mean? Am I right? I'm not the only one that does that. Thank you, Lord. We get a little cocky in that next chapter. Don't we? I, I knew I had him. It's no big deal. I got that. It's my arms. It's what it is. It's the muscles. Right? That's what we do. But the Bible says that David became the psalmist. He became somebody that wasn't only a man of war, but he became somebody amazing. Psalm 27, 4 says this, One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. What? This is the man that stood up to a giant, stood up to armies, didn't run from anything, wasn't afraid of anything, and now he's writing poetry. I'm confused. A poet and a mighty general. I'm confused. To me, they're not one and the same. The world tells me they're not one and the same. I worked with a doctor, Dr. Bratcher. Big man. Seemed like all the old doctors were big men. My doctor, Clear, scared to death of that guy. Every time I came here, he was a big man. He always had a needle in his hand, or so it seemed like. I hated going there. I'd go, and my belly would start rumbling. Like, oh, my. And they had that goofy... Weird music playing in the background. It's just torturous. You knew that you were going to die soon, right? And it was just a shot. But, you know, David now, he's this mighty man. Dr. Bratcher, he was kind of man. He was like that normal. He's a big guy, and he could do anything. He could solve anything. And things my wife had had that other physicians couldn't resolve or couldn't come up with. I'd go to him and say, Dr. B, tell me what's going on. He'd say, well, try this or go over and see this doctor and do this. And sure enough, bam, 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 bam. But you know what he would do in his free time? He would knit. <laughs> he would make chocolate cakes. And I'm going to tell you, I have yet to taste the chocolate cake that was better than his chocolate cake. I'm going to tell you. So you can be something awesome and something amazing, something strong, something mighty. 
But you can also be like David here. I desire to be in the house of the Lord. I desire to behold his beauty. I desire to know him. I desire to have to rely on him. Mm. Isn't that awesome? Psalm 65 and 4 says, Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee that he may dwell in thy courts and he shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. How do you bark orders one moment and then you come up with this next? You see, David learned how to sing when he was out in the field as a boy. Did you hear what I said? He had a lot of free time on his hands between battles, amen? And in that free time, Norman, he learned how to draw closer to his God. Talking to sheep after a while gets a little boring, amen? you got to talk to something more. And after he defeated that giant, the Bible was awesome. Psalm 101. Now, I don't know if David sung like me. I'm not sure. But he said, I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord. Will I sing? I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way oh when wilt thou come unto me i will walk within my house with a perfect heart i will see no wicked thing before mine eyes i hate the work of them that turn aside it shall not cleave to me froward heart shall depart from me i will not know a wicked person i could read on and on and on but this is David after war. Isn't that cool? This is David after war, Norman. This is David that after he defeated that giant, Angie, after he destroyed many armies, Kim, he didn't forget who got him through it, Brother Jack. Sarah, he didn't forget. Yeah, he may have had his down moments like you and I. But man, when he remembered God. Mm, I feel like saying this this morning. Do you remember him? Do you remember who he is? Do you remember what he's done? Do you remember how he's taken care of you? Do you remember how he's blessed you? Pastor Wayne, he's allowed me to go through things that have rocked me. I know, but it didn't kill you. Pastor Wayne, he's allowed me to deal with things, man, that nobody should ever... I agree, but it didn't kill you. David found himself at times hiding in caves. David at times found himself on the bad side of God. You see, David was known as the sinner too after he became the psalmist, amen. But you know what David learned even in sin? I'm going to throw myself at God and just let him do what he thinks is right. That's not a man afraid of God. That's a man that knows his God. Even when I mess up, even when I make a boo-boo, even when I make a big mistake, Mary, I'm still going to go running to him. You see, as a kid, I learned that you might have a secret from mom and dad. And you might be able to keep it for a while. But when a brother or sister finds out, it becomes a bargaining chip for them. Somebody say amen. And if you had a sister like mine, Melissa, the bargaining chip became more and more expensive every day. Somebody say amen. To the point I'm like, skip you. I'm going to go wrap myself out anyway. Don't you hate it when you wrap yourself out and nothing happens? You're like, I endured that for nothing. It's how God is, saints. A lot of times we think about him as this big, mean ogre. And all he's doing is, is waiting for you to come running to him. David knew that. I'm going to throw myself at the mercy of a living God. And if you read the New Testament, you know what you find about that living God? He's merciful. He loves you. He cares for you. He wants the best for you. Amen. He died for you. Not only did he die for you, but he rose for you. And he left something behind for you. That is amazing. 
Do you understand this? I'm going to jump ahead. 1 Samuel 13 and 14 says this about David. He was a man after God's own heart. Mackenzie, that does something to me. That does something to me. When I read that, a man after God's own heart. We always want to focus in on David and made this big boo-boo over here. We do. Skip that. He was still a man after God's own heart. The scripture calls him a man after God's own heart. Even though he wasn't perfect. You know what that says to me? It says, Wayne, you can be a man after God's own heart. Amen. Even if you're not perfect. Amen. Listen to me this morning, saints of God. You can be people after God's own heart. Even though you're not perfect. The more I read about the Lord, Charles, the more I understand him, the more I get to know him, the more I understand. Yeah, he would like for us to be perfect, but even though we're not, he still loves us. Even though we're not, he still talks to me, amen? You ever had a friend get mad at you and not talk to you anymore, amen? You know what? God still talks to me after I make mistakes, amen? God still talks to me in the midst of my sin and in the midst of my... He still talks to me. He doesn't run from me. He doesn't leave me. He doesn't forsake me. He loves me. And I truly want to be like David. I want to be a man after God's own heart. I want to, on the day that I cross into heaven, I want him to look at me and say, there goes my friend. I want God to look down and say, there goes my boy. So you see, before war, David was just a little bitty boy that only his family knew about. And the only time they missed him was when he wasn't doing his job. But after, there's more things. The mighty man of war, the psalmist, the man after God's own heart. I think one other scripture just basically called him the man. Might not have been the right the man, but he was the man. Do you get that? So what was the difference, Wayne? It was what took place in the middle. It was the fight in the middle. Will you listen to me for a moment? Some of you have that fight going on right now. You got to tell you something about that fight? It's going to define you. And let me get a little deep with you right now. It's already defining you. Pastor, what do you mean it's already defining me? The way you're handling it right now is defining you. Think about it. Before David showed up with the food, the cheese, the wine to feed his brothers and all those other people, everybody else was hiding behind rocks. Amen. They hadn't even attempted to fight the battle. So what was that saying about them? Do you understand what I'm saying? What was that saying about them? Cowards. They were the, the best well-armed cowards in the world, Norman. Are you hearing me? Many Christians hide inside the church, saints of God, but they won't face their deepest, darkest secrets. You got to face them. You got to fight them. You got to go. And can I tell you about a relationship with God, Tess? The more you serve him, the more that stuff comes out. Pastor, I don't like that. I, I, I don't like it either, man. I hate it. I, I can't. But the more you serve him, the more it comes out. The more it comes out, the more you have to deal with it. But Wayne, those are things I've been running from for years. You know what? Me too. But I'm tired of running from those things. You, you know, at some point you got to turn and face those things. Deal with those things. 
You're never going to become the psalmist that sings praise unto God. Listen to this until you defeat that thing once and for all. Pastor, I can't praise the Lord. What's whipping you this morning? What's beat you down before you got here this morning? What did you battle last night before you got here? Defeat those things before you walk into the house of God. Destroy them. If you can't defeat them, put them on notice. Pastor, can you do that? Oh, yeah, man. Anybody have something that you face daily, whatever that is? Amen. Every morning you wake up, it's there. You know what you can do? Live, you can look at it and say, I'm putting you on notice today. For the next couple hours, I'm going to the house of God. You are not going to deal with me this morning. Amen. Pastor, you're being corny. No, I'm not. You can tell your enemies, there's a line that you don't cross. Have you told the enemy that yet, saints? There's a line you don't cross. There's a line you don't cross. If there's a line you tell the enemy that you don't cross, when he crosses it, you better be able to back up what you say. Because you see, when I tell the Lord, Sunday mornings are my time, Sunday mornings are my God's time, Sunday mornings belong to nothing else, I protect my Sunday mornings. But, 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 I, I protect my Sunday mornings. Nobody messes with my Sunday mornings. Nobody even tries to mess with my Sunday mornings now. Isn't that awesome? In your spiritual self, you tell the enemy, there are things that you don't cross. There are things that you don't mess with. I protect those areas. They belong to God. I'm getting long-winded, but I feel God this morning. You know what the Lord is telling some of you folks here this morning? That battle that you're in right now, it's defining you. That battle that you've been in for a long time, Mary, it's defining you. Tessie, it's already defined you. Can you change your definition? David did. This crazy man in the New Testament by the name of Saul, he changed his definition. Look up Saul and then look up Paul. I think you'll be a little amazed. Will you stand, please? Play softly, honey, please. Father, give me wisdom now. You ever just have a period of time in your life that's uncertain? And you kind of have your eyes on the things that just confuse you a little, that cause concern. Will you play for me, Bev? That cause concern. Anybody besides me? And if you're not careful, those things will define you at that moment. Look at yourselves for a moment. Think about yourselves for a moment. How, how do you look to God? How do you look to the other people around you because of your trial, because of your battle? How do you look? What do they see, Ed? Can I tell you what I see, dude? I see a guy that beats me to church now. You know how many people beat me to church? Not many. You know what that says to me? That floors me. That amazes me. You know why he gets to church before me? He's got to pick somebody up for me. Praise the Lord. Pastor, what do you mean? Hey, man, faithful in the little bitty things. You know what the Bible says? Faithful in the little bitty things. Pastor, what are you saying? Faithful in your praise. Faithful in your time with God. Faithful in your Bible reading. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Faithful in all those little bitty things 
that you think don't really matter. Brenda, all those little bitty things, they define you. They build you up to something more that God will use later. Do you understand that? What God will use later. You see, be, people forget something about that little story. Oh, man, Dave was awesome. He knocked the giant down. He cut his head off. But you know what he also did too? He liberated his friends and family. He set them free. Lorena, he set them free. Remember, they were hiding before. They were rejoicing afterwards. Have you ever thought about your trial from the perspective of the people around you? Oh, Pastor, that would mean I don't have to think about myself. Agreed. Think about your trial from the perspective of the people around you. Are they hiding too? Are they fearful too? Are they bound as well? What if you defeat that giant? What if you overcome that giant? What if you give praise after you defeat that giant? We bow your heads, please. Father, we come before you this morning, God, so thankful for all of your blessings, so thankful for all of your teachings, so thankful, God, for all of your lessons, so thankful, God, for the trials we go through. God, I'm thankful for what you've said to us this morning. Father, I pray now that you would move upon the individuals, God, that really need a blessing from you, God, that really need a touch from you. God, those that really need to overcome this giant, this enemy, this fear, this whatever, God, touch them right now. God, if there be any that aren't saved here this morning, God, tug at their hearts one more time. God, I'll let them know that this altar is open, God, and it's open for them. The invitation that you're giving them, God, is an invitation that you're giving them alone, Lord. Bless your people right now. Bless your people right now. Bless your people right now. I'm going to ask you to come to the altar this way. If you want to be known as the person who knocked down a giant, would you come and get in the altars right now? If you want to be known as the mighty man or woman of war, would you come and get in these altars right now, please? If you want to be known as the psalmist, and then you insert your name afterwards, come and get in these altars. And when you get in these altars, cry out to your God, speak to your God, worship your God, do whatever you have to do to become that individual and make yourself a promise make your God a promise that when you get up from this altar you will be those people Father move right now I pray Father bless right now I pray Father anoint right now I pray Father set free right now I pray God move right now my Father move right now I pray Jesus holy name Jesus holy name holy name. This is beautiful, saints. When you're done praying, you feel like God has set you free, that God has delivered you. Will you sit back and raise those hands up when you're done and just really give praise to God? Would you do that, please? Give serious praise, not just in a whisper, but with a loud voice. Give a praise in Jesus' name. Amen. hold you down we're gonna lift our voice in victory we're gonna make your praises loud oh the enemy's been defeated oh death couldn't hold you down we're gonna lift our voice in victory 
We're going to make your praises loud. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Oh, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the oh, come on! Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. Oh, I said, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout out to God with the voice of praise. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Oh, hallelujah. The enemy's been defeated. We lift your name up. The enemy's been defeated. The death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. Oh, the enemy's been defeated. Oh, death couldn't hold you. Well, we're going to lift. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to, one more time, the enemy's been defeated. Well, the enemy's been defeated. Aren't you glad? And death couldn't hold you. Oh, we're going to lift. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to, oh, come on and shout. Shout it to God with the voice of triumph. Shout it to God with the voice of praise. Come on. Shout it to God with the voice of triumph. Shout it to God with the voice of praise. Shout it to God with the voice of triumph. Shout out to God. Oh, come on. We're going to lift this name up. Shout out to God with the voice of. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Oh, he's worthy. You ought to know this. Come on. David was a man of war, but he was a man of praise. Come on. Let's worship him. Well, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. We sing glory. Hallelujah. To our God, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on now, let me hear you. Well, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God. Cause he's God my Savior, he's God my healer, well, he's God my deliverer, oh, I said yes he is, 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 yes he
worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God. Come on, glory, hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise. Come on, every praise. out this morning. Give God praise this morning. You're an overcomer. You're victorious this morning. He's done won the battle. The battle is the Lord.
you tonight, bring your stuff back, and we'll baptize you some other time. Amen. Is God good? I think he's awesome. Can everybody stand, please? Sounds good to me. I don't know about you all. Praise our way out of here. How about that? Can we do that? We'll let them sing. We'll sing and praise our way out of here. How about that? Lord, we thank you for this service. Thank you for your blessings, God. Thank you for your awesomeness. Thank you for the touches we've received this morning, God. Help us right now, we pray, God. Help us to be great lights of this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Come back tonight if you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, everybody will be happy. Yes. 